we know about the patient. Yes, yes. The this, history, fantastic. This patient uh, has a 35 gram prostate. He's been on, on alpha blockers and a, uh, uh, for like three years now. And he's not happy with the medical therapy. Hello? So we're going to attempt to preserve ejaculation mm. and the risk of a dry orgasm using our ejaculation preserving technique is about 12-15% as I'll show you later. And really all it involves is trying not to injure the ejaculatory duct mechanism. It's no more complicated than that. And you can do this with TORP as well, although I think it's easier with, um, with laser. I'm just setting up the camera first. It's very important when you use this system, I don't know if you've got a room camera, very important when you use this system that you make sure that the lens cannot get wet because, shh, guys, shh, nobody else speaking to this. Silence. Um, it's important you make sure the, the lens can't get wet because there's a small filter and if the filter gets water in it, you get very bad visibility. Okay, so here we are. Can I have the lights down, please? The lights down. So there's no sculpting already. The catheter in before, maybe? Yeah. Can we, switch, can we switch please to the... Uh, okay, well, we've got the cystitis cystica. So I think we'll take a biopsy at the end of this. It doesn't look like tumour, does it? No. It's not the heart seal in the cupboard. Yeah. Can we switch no. the image to the, uh, to the endoscope, to the cystoscope, please? I got this one sooner. Thank you. What do you think of this, guys? It's chronic cystitis. Okay. Well, we, we'll need a biopsy there. So what I'll do at the end, I'll do the laser, and then I'll... Is it a C -rickus? It's a bit high for you, Yeah. Okay. That is one too. But we'll biopsy it and destroy it. I'll do a... Yeah, you can. We, we can have it. Please prepare a, a cold cup biopsy, and then we we'll can calculate later on. Yeah, we can do it with the laser. There's no problem. I'll do that with the laser as well, quite easily. Okay? So let's have a look at the prostate first of all. So, moderately enlarged prostate. No significant middle lobe, which is nice. We can do middle lobes with this, but it makes it a little bit more complicated. What mm -hmm. Okay. Can we do the water on, please? So, you see the fibre now, we've got some fibre coming out of it. We have the laser on 120 40, please. So, what I'm going to do first of all is I'm going to make a little channel in the middle of the prostate on 120 watts. There you see my aiming beam. Can you see that? Yeah. And the important thing is that we have a little bit of working space first of all. This is only a 120 watts, but we just want to give ourselves a little bit of working channel first. There, okay. Now I'm going to come down and see how far I'm going to go down. It's quite a long prostate despite its size, so I'm going to work down here a bit more, working on the sort of anterior part of it. The question from D Dr. Zaini, do, By you, the way, yeah. do you touch the tissue or how no, far we do you stay? Thank you. Do we touch the tissue? We try to be just off the tissue, but right at the start, sometimes it's impossible to avoid touching the tissue, which is why I'm making this channel. So we're down there and I'm going to not come down too far to the vera. I'm going to come there and there. And I'm going to leave this tissue around the vera. I'll come a bit closer than I meant to and to try to preserve the ejaculation. Now let's go up to 120 please. Uh, 180. 180 please, 180. Now I'm going to put the laser up to full power because I, I'm a lazy man. I'd like to finish quickly. And now we're going to work on the lateral lobes. 
This is not a big prostate. It won't take us very long to do this case. Overall, XPS screen light is a little bit slower than TURP if you're good at TURP. But by the time you get set up and do the bladder washout and check the irrigation and so on, it takes exactly the same time in theatre. So there's no difference in the number of cases you can do. On the other hand, if you have a very large prostate, with TRP you have to stop after one hour, with this you don't. So it's important not to put on too many gigantic prostates. Now, I'm at the bad net. What I tend to do is a variation of homeo surgery, so I use the scope, and you see that, to um, dissect the bladder and neck by blunt dissection. I'm not going to go crazy in the bladder and neck in this guy, because although I say we don't think the ejaculation is much affected by the bladder and neck, nonetheless, we're not going to do enormous bladder and neck decisions just for the sake of it. So you can see I'm opening up the lateral lobe here. There's the fibre of the bladder and neck. That's the in nucleation plane, we just check now where the ureters are. They're a long way up, so that's fine. Nice benign ureters. Merci, Michel, for this nice case. Up the bladder. We don't know what that is. And now I'm working on the lateral lobes here. Now you can see I'm not quite touching the tissue, even though I was perhaps a little bit to begin with. Cutting, cutting the, the neck bilaterally used to be a, uh, a primordial and a, a, an essential step in every green light. You don't use this anymore, do, do you? I, I'm afraid I didn't hear that at all. I mean, in the, in the beginning, four or five years ago, they used to tell us in the beginning of every procedure, you cut the bladder neck, you incise the bladder neck to create yeah. the channel. Do you, do, do you still do this? Well. Well, when we describe the igloo technique, we, we describe deep bladder neck incisions at the end. Mm -hmm. And I think if you're operating on an old man with retention, that's still a wise thing to do. But if you're operating on a man who wants to keep ejaculating, while it may not make a difference, you can actually sculpt out the inside of the bladder neck very nicely, as I'll show you here. And leave a, you see there, so we've got a functional bladder neck, but it's, it's wide open, but it's still going to be, I hope, have some smooth muscle function. But I don't know is the answer. I mean, most of the time, when people tell you what they do in surgery, it's, it's, it's their prejudice rather than any form of evidence. All I can do is show you our data. So I want to take this down now. The correct movement, by the way, for those of you starting, is to sit here and see the whole of the blue triangle. And just move the scope back from side to side. Right? I'm trying to sculpt it a little bit more for the ejaculation. You'll see a BPH nodule has formed here. It'd be very easy to get in here and enucleate if we wanted to now, but I'm not going to. So I'm going to work on this, which is holding my fibre up a little bit, this nodule. I don't want to get too close to the barrier here because the ejaculation guts, as you will see from the next brief presentation, are right under this. Any question from the audience? What did you say? So that, that little lump has just popped up. Do you see it? It's like it's grown from the floor of the prostate. It wasn't there to begin with, and now it's there. So it's a, it's a nuisance. Do you want to get in my way? Do you, do you want to leave it, or are you going to simply vaporize it later on? Well, I might take it out differently. Let's see. I don't want to vaporize right down on top of it because I'm worried about the ejaculated duct of that side lying just beneath it. Another Let's see what we can do. I'm going to try to lift it off. Yes, another question about the apical tissue. Yeah. How, how distal you go with the vaporizing the apical tissue and you still you consider yourself safe? Well, we used to go for what we call the lonely vero. Uh, we'd leave no tissue. We'd come right down to here, this level, and we'd have the various city on its own, uh, complete, sorry, this is not as, this is a little stone, so it's in the right place. Um, but now we tend to be much more conservative, and it doesn't seem to make any difference to them. I'm just going to use the tip of the scope now to try to lift that lump up. Just like a hole that would. There we go, that's it. 
And that bit took away from the area I'm concerned about. You see what I did there? Okay. So now I'm sitting inside the Adenoma firing up rather than back. And that's the, there, let me show you, that is the plane around there. That's the plane of a nucleation if we were doing a whole lot. You see it? See how different that is to the rest of it? So a, green, a partial green lap. Okay, we'll just knock that off. So those of you who are saying you can't get histology, yes you can. No trouble. There's no benefit in doing a nucleation in a prostate of this size, by the way. Um, and I wouldn't recommend you try it. I'm really doing it because I didn't want to vaporize down, because here, just under there, is where the ejaculation duct lies. And I don't want to go vertically down onto that. Okay, so that's the, not quite as um, much tissue left behind as I normally do as an ejaculation preserving procedure. But you can see we've got nice tissue there. There's very little abnormal left behind there. In terms of 12 o'clock tissue, I worked for one boss who said you must always take the 12 o'clock tissue or you have a blood that stricture. And I worked for another one who said you must never touch it. So I, I kind of look out at the end and I see if it looks as if it's hanging down or not. This is a little bit, so I'll just take it there. Clearly, if you have any doubt at the apex, it is safer to leave it. It's always better to go back and take two grams of tissue than to go back and put it in the MS 800. And you can hit the sphincter with this just like any other energy, although you have to work hard. Okay, so there we are. So we got a little bit of bleeding on the base of the prostate when I did that little nucleation, I should think. Let's switch off the irrigation. This is there's one vein bleeding there somewhere. Are you if, there is a bit of, if, there, if there is a bit of bleeding right beside the vero, I'll just leave it because I don't want to coagulate when I'm trying to preserve the ejaculation. That's with the irrigation off, by the way. That's only on outflow. You can see there's a little bit of blood and it's just coming through mucosa. You see that? And that's very typical. You see that? So the only thing that's bleeding is this mucosal vein. You see that? It's nicely seen. So we take that because we don't want it to be bleeding around the scapula afterwards. And we use the coagulation function, which is stroboscopic lower power laser, silicon vaporizer, you see, and I'm just very gently drawing a circle around that bleeding vein. And it's stopped. Okay. A little bit more there, I'll just very, very quickly do that, but I'm not going to do any more than that, okay? A little bit of tissue there that might cause a problem. I'm not worried about the continence mechanism there, so I'll just take that down a little bit. Now this down is a spine anesthetic, so we'll have a, and I'm going to do some stuff with this bladder, so we'll have a catheter overnight. Um, but ordinarily I would take this man's catheter out in one hour. So would people be happy with that as a TURP? What does the audience think? Dr. Zaini. He gives you a thumb up. Sorry? Our esteemed colleague from LAU, he gives you a thumb up. Thumbs up, good, okay. All right, so now I need the um, biopsy for us, please. Can, can we see the, the fossa after you empty the, the, the bladder to see if it collapsed? Uh, yeah, don't touch it, I'll do it, uh, Gordon? No, no, I use biopsy for sex. Yeah, I use that. So, so now I will, and I'm going to take some biopsies, and I'm going to try to do an on-block excision of these little things in the bladder. Yes. But we want you to show us... Actually, leave it as is. Turn the laser down to 40 watts, please, will you? Yeah. We, uh, Gordon, do you hear me? Sorry, 